what are we doing in the black community? You the mean? number one consumer of a Mercedes Benz is us. Us. Hmm. The number one consumer of a Gucci and a Louis Vuitton. Us. And they don't even advertise. Why is it that in the black community, we are always the number one consumer, but we're not the number one creators? So you just said it, the fact that there's consumers and creators for so long, we assume success based on consumption. Mm. Welcome to Closing the Gap, the truth about black wealth. Of course, I'm your host, Mr. Wilbert Hamilton, owner and founder of Hamilton Wealth Advisors. I got a spe very special guest here today, Mr. Morris Smith. Appreciate you being here today, brother. Yeah, appreciate you having me, man. Yes, sir. I've known this brother, man, shoot, going back almost 21 years now. I don't, you know, time is flowing by. I said, he got a little gray hair and I ain't got no hair. So, you know, we've seen things um, elevate. I've seen this man grow, um, prosper, um, very successful um, entrepreneur. Um, no surprise to me because he's, a, you know, actually a brother of mine from the greatest fraternity in the history of the, the world, which is Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. So um, achievement in every form of human endeavor is what we all strive for. So um, no shock, you know, to, to me and to many um, of what he's done, but he's been doing incredible work uh, from his barbershops to his real estate ventures. Uh, very successful, very intelligent, very knowledgeable. I mean, I would say almost a renaissance man of sorts because, man, they can wear many hats, but um, definitely one that inspires. Um, I like to see people that inspire me, that are doing a lot of different things, not scared to try, um, and continue to push the envelope and push the boundary. And that all about, you know, educating people and uplifting people. So, of course, that's what we're about um, here. That's what this whole show is about. Of course, we want to help close the gap, uh, close the wealth gap in the African American community. And we do that by education. Uh, we do that by, you know, communication and, you know, eventually hope we take some of this information, they go out and execute. So, um, you know, you've been doing that on a day-to-day -day basis and, you know, just thank you for being here, man. And yeah. we'll kind of, you know, kick it off and jump into it, man. And just uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, of course, my name is uh, Morris Smith and uh, I'm a barber, real estate agent, entrepreneur. Yeah. yeah, and investor as well. Yeah, so well, I'm, I'm gonna take it all the way back, and I want to take it back to the foundation of kind of where things started from. Because you know, I'm not a fan of people being a jack of all trades and master of none. Right. Um, and you know, even though you do many different things, you do have some master skill sets <laughs> that were the foundation of kind of what you're doing now, and that have given you stability. And I think it's important for people to know that yeah. um, because a lot of times people see the the finished product, but they didn't see those beginning stages and then what you set up and the foundation that you laid for yourself. Um, and kind of what you, where you've come from. So of course, man's from Montgomery, Alabama. You know, Gump side in the house represents City of Lanilla. Yeah. Uh, even though it's no more, but we still, you know, holding dear dear to our heart. But yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I know you started off kind of as a as a barber per se, and kind of tell me how you got involved in that, and you know, how did that open up doors for you? So I actually started cutting. You know, when I was like, I, I jumped out there on the porch, uh, cutting in the neighborhood, 13, 14 years old. Uh, messing up people's heads, you know, <laughs> and then, you know, uh, I just stuck with it. Uh, I never gave up. I was cutting, you know, in barbershops when I was like 16, when I was in mm -hmm. high school, but I was hopping around, mm -hmm. you know, just trying to find my, you know, find my place. Yeah. And um, I, I, I just stuck to it and, you know, college, I really, really uh, got better at cutting. You know, I remember just sitting around watching, uh, you know, in particular guy that was very good at cutting hair. He used to have about 20 to 25 heads. Of, all the Alabama players just sitting there, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm watching and I'm learning and I'm just taking it all in. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was able to, you know, perfect my craft as well. Well, like I say, a man, for, a man skillful in his works, and of course the Bible tells us that a man skillful in his works will be placed before great men. And of course, as you became, you know, more skillful, um, and it led you into different ventures. And, you know, so what was the transition and what kind of made you decide to go from just being a barber to actually being a shop owner? <laughs> so, you know, again, just being in college and just watching everyone around me. So I'm very observant, right? Mm -hmm. So there was a, a guy, you know, whose who shop I used to work in, he was an older guy. And I used to just see him grind, you know, from working at BF Goodrich to, uh, to cutting hair. And that motivated me. He owned his own shop, but I saw how he was making money and he was well off. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes you see people, they're well off, but they're not talking about it. They're not loud about it. Mm -hmm. And he was one of those people. So that motivated me, and um, just being in the shop, you know, there was a lady that used to come to the shop all the time, and she was always, you know, hey, you need to get your real estate license. She was a real estate broker, and uh, she just was adamant about it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I decided to tell her, let me go see what she's talking about. You know, I uh, went and got my real estate license uh, right out of college, mm -hmm. and I did all of this right out of college. I got my uh, first, opened up my first barbershop, 
in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. I was 22 years old. So mm -hmm. all this stuff that I did, I did it at an early age. Mm -hmm. The uh, the real estate company, you know, where I went to get my my real estate license at, was walking distance from my barbershop. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah. So I was able to walk over there and you know take my, my courses and mm -hmm. you know took the courses and um, eventually I passed the test because I failed the test uh, two times. Okay. Third time, I ain't tell nobody. I just went and took the test. Third time of charm. Yeah, third time of charm, man. And uh, I just hit the ground running with the real estate. Okay, well, yeah. hey, no, no, no passion. And, you know, say passion equals profit is what we like to say. But, you know, my biggest thing, what I hear is, you know, faith without works is dead. Absolutely. You know, a lot of people speak about it, not everybody be about it. Yeah. So the fact that you jumped off the porch, you know, that's the first step. Um, we always tell people, you have to take the first step and take that initiative to push yourself, you know, past your comfort zone. I think a lot of people, you know, are in their own way when it comes to their success. You know, a lot of people talk about wanting to be successful, wanting to be great, but not many people are willing to take those steps and make the necessary sacrifices to make that happen. I mean, you're pretty sure you had to sacrifice some things because stepping out of there to have your own barbershop required you to take on some overhead. Absolutely. You know, stepping out there, getting your real estate license required you taking some time away from the barbershop and sacrifice maybe times when you could have been making money cutting heads and actually going and getting that real estate license. But, you know, that perseverance and that work ethic is what most people, you know, don't understand it, what they don't see. Yeah. Like I so said, we talked about earlier, everybody likes to see that finished product and the end result. They like to see him driving around in a new Maserati. Yeah. <laughs> they don't understand what he had to do to actually be able to afford yeah. the Maserati. So, you know, those are things that we like to talk about and those we're gonna get more into right back in a minute. Welcome to Hamilton Wealth Advisors, where our goal is to change the financial landscape of the African-American community by providing the best of the best in financial professionals to help close the gap on financial wellness, wealth creation, and wealth transference. We're continuing to expand and grow our reach and add qualified advisors to our team. Help us to teach our community how to create generational wealth. We're looking for passionate, selfless, and professional advisors that pride themselves in the core beliefs that education plus expertise leads to proper execution. So if you think this opportunity may be for you, ask yourself this question, what is your why? And if the answer is you want to be a professional successor advisor, that makes a positive impact in the lives of all you come into contact with, contact us about joining our team today. As we look to move forward, continue to be a blessing to those who would never come into contact with by creating a successful financial plan today. Welcome back to another episode of Closing the Gap, The Truth About Black Wealth. Of course, I'm your host, Mr. Wilbur Hamilton, here again with my man, Mr. Morris Smith. Uh, we're going to jump right back into it, man. We're getting into some good information. Um, you've heard us once again talk about how faith without works is dead. This man is a living witness, a living example to that. Um, we want to continue to push that forward and, and want you to grab on, not just to the ideas and the information that we're providing, but actually put it into action and put it into use. Um, because if you don't take those first steps, if you don't jump off the porch, so to speak, and, and put that initiative and put that one foot in front of the other, you know, all of your dreams and goals and aspirations can never happen um, so you know with that being said and you know you jumping off the porch and jumping off with a lot of responsibility you know what are some of the biggest lessons and things that you learned and actually just you know owning your first shop from a business standpoint well I mean you know I've learned so much you know honestly when I opened up my first barbershop I didn't have like real help you know it was mm -hmm. just myself yeah. Uh, I must give, you know, um, props to my uncle who, who helped me build out the shop and I must give props to my sister who also helped me, you know, uh, get the shop. Because if it wasn't for, for those people helping me, you know, I don't think I would be where I am today. Uh, it's just, you know, again, being consistent and really, really wanting to, you know, learn the business, be a business owner. And, you know, just coming out of school, there wasn't any jobs. I came out in 2005, so the job market was terrible then. <laughs> you know, that's when we had, you know, was going into our recession and um, the job market was terrible. And I just decided to, you know, open up my shop and do my own thing. Yeah. yeah, well, like I say, <laughs> ain't no path like taking your own path and creating one for yourself and, you know, being in a position where you can kind of dictate your own future. Yeah. Um, and the biggest thing with that is, like I say, continuing to push forward and having those people around to help you. Um, you know, a lot of people, you know, they won't help, but don't realize that people won't extend the help until they see you start moving first. Yeah. You know, once people see you moving, yeah. other people will join in and help you push the car once you start pushing. But okay. if you sit in the car and that car ain't moving, ain't nobody coming to help you push while you sitting on the inside. And another thing I learned too is sometimes you have to ask for help. Some people don't like to ask for help. It is okay to ask for help. If you need help, ask someone. You yeah. know, there's plenty of people out here that will help you 
get to where you, where you need but to get I to. I think that's that's one of the biggest lessons I had to learn personally because I'm one of those yeah. people that don't want to ask for help myself. <laughs> you know, I want to be a person that, that does it all and seems like they have it all together. And of course, and this is the things that we're trying to, we talk about here you know, probably every episode is that, you know, trying to get out of our own way. I've had to learn to get out of my own way and, and from time to time of understanding that, you know what? You know, I'm so busy wanting to be a blessing to other people, but sometimes right. you have to allow other people to bless you. Absolutely. You know, you, you yeah, somebody told me one time, I said, man, you stopping people from getting their blessings because you won't let nobody help <laughs> so, you. know, God wants to use people to help you too. So, yeah. you know, getting out of our own way, you know, asking for help, but also being in a position and ready to receive the help. Um, one of the big issues I feel like in our community that we lack is understanding the importance and value of professionals. You know, yeah. speaking to professional realtors, you know, professional barbers, right. you know, professional financial advisors, you know, attorneys, doctors, you know, all these people have especially because they've done an extensive amount of school and training to help assist us. But if you don't go ask these people questions, then there's no way you can take advantage of the information. So, you know, I'm glad that you had some people around you that saw you yeah. uh, and helped give you that push when you jumped off the porch. You know, and with that, I know one of the biggest things I've noticed is just kind of especially, you know, being an entrepreneur and business owners, obviously, you know, I'm sure you ran into that having a barbershop is, you know, how do you manage the multiple personalities you have to deal with? Oh man, that's a real good question. Uh, and, and the thing is, again, barbers are just not, you know, a lot of them, you know, don't possess the, uh, the entrepreneurship skill um, as being an entrepreneur. Uh, so sometimes, you know, they, they, their thinking and their mindset is totally different from that of a shop owner. So, you know, I, I always try to, you know, put my guys on game and I always tell them, hey, look, you know, if you're going to go out here and open up a barbershop, open up a business, you know, this is how it's going to have to be run, you know. Um, so I have to like to try to provide structure because I have a lot of young guys in my shop. So I always try to provide some type of structure to show them, hey, this ain't the way, this is the way. You get what I mean? So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm always trying to, trying to lead and, you know, lead by example as well. Well, I know that about you. You've always been a man that's, you know, rather be seen and not heard. Um, and, you know, like to be, you know, a leader. Because I, I like that because I'm a lot like that myself, I believe. I don't, you know, do a lot of talking. I don't like to be, you know, loud and boastful. I like to just let my actions speak for themselves. Right. And, you know, I believe a man's skill from his words will be placed before a great man. So, you know, obviously in doing that, you know, God sees that, you know, he'll bless you accordingly. You know, and with those benefits and those gifts and as you continue to flourish and grow and you got to shop with multiple individuals in their work and you're managing them, how are you able to manage the real estate on the other side? Because you don't just do real estate, you do real estate. Right. You know, so how was how was that going in the process of being a shop owner still and master barber yourself, also getting into the real estate? Oh man. So I had to learn how to delegate. Mm. You know, once I learned how to delegate and you know not trade my time for money, mm. that's when I was able to really elevate and build my real estate portfolio. So I was able to build a million dollar real estate portfolio from behind the chair. Mm -hmm. And uh, another reason why I get out here and I show and teach people the same thing, like you don't have to be, you know, you don't have to be rich or have a whole lot of money. You just need to have what I call lack of information. A lot of people have that, a lack of information. And that's what I like to try to give, which is information. Well, I mean, that, that's amazing. I mean, to build a successful, you know, million dollar real estate portfolio from behind the chair. I mean, that's that's a bar and all to itself. And that's something I definitely want to dive into. And, you know, what areas of real estate were you looking in? I mean, were you, you know, did you get out, obviously, getting your real estate license, obviously, the first people saying you want to help people sell their homes or helping people find homes to purchase. So, you know, what area of real estate, you know, you know, were you gravitated to when you kind of got in? So when I first got in, I was doing sales. You know, I was a realtor. Mm -hmm. And I was out selling houses, but I also realized, too, that it was a lot of work involved in that. You know, you just run, rip and run around town, and I was like, it's gotta be a better way. And it just so happened that I came across a lot of investors as I was selling. Mm -hmm. And I will never forget, it was a guy who I came in contact with, and he had 25 houses. And mind you now, he was just a, you know, just an average working individual. He, you know, worked at a factory out in, in, in Tuscaloosa, but he owned 25 houses. And that right there motivated me along. He owned 25 houses, but all of them were paid off except like four of them. Hmm. You know, and I remember how I bumped into him. I was, you know, out looking for houses to list because, you know, if you list properties, that's that's better, right? Mm -hmm. And he had us for sale by owner. And he said, you know what? He said, I'm gonna list with you. He said, because he said, you you consistent. 
you know, he said, you consistent and you persistent. <laughs> he was like, uh, I'm going to go on list with you because uh, I was calling him every day. Hmm. You know, I tell people all the time, you know, <laughs> faith without works is dead. We've said it several times and, you know, consistently doing the right thing over a long period of time is what actually creates success. But I think what happened and what you did and, you know, what a lot of people need to take in this is that your consistency, your effort, and your perseverance through good times and bad because every day is not a good day, uh -huh. whether it's in the barbershop or in the real estate <laughs> game. So the fact that you stayed with it, you stayed after it, you know, someone else saw that. And him seeing your work ethic and your consistency, yeah. that's what allowed him to say, you know what, I want to give this brother a chance. And that took you to a whole nother level. Absolutely. We'll talk about that in a minute.